Good evening, aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the newspaper dated 15th of July 2023. Displayed here is a list of articles that we will take up for discussion today. Go through it. Now we will start with the first article discussion. Take a look at this front page article. Yesterday, around 2:35 p.m., India's third moon mission Chandrayaan-3 was successfully launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. The mission was launched using the launch vehicle Mark III rocket. Chandrayaan-3 mission is India's second attempt to soft land its robotic instruments on the lunar surface. This mission is being carried out after the previous attempt that is Chandrayaan 2 failed in 2019. See so far only 3 countries that is the US, Russia and China have successfully soft landed on the moon. So if India successfully soft lands its equipments on the lunar surface then India will be added into an elite club of countries. Now coming back to the launch See around 16 minutes after the launch vehicle Mark 3 lifted off the Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft got separated from the rocket and it entered into an elliptic parking orbit here the term elliptic parking orbit refers to the temporary elliptical orbit used during the launch of a spacecraft for example if we want to launch a satellite from the earth to the moon initially we have to place it in an elliptical earth orbit after orbiting the earth in an elliptical path for some days the satellite will then be maneuvered and injected into the moon's orbit here the temporary elliptical orbit used by the spacecraft is what is called as elliptic parking orbit See as of now Chandrayaan 3 propulsion module is orbiting in an elliptic parking orbit over the next month the propulsion module will execute a series of maneuvers to sling itself towards the moon and subsequently it will be caught by the moon's gravity once the propulsion module has been captured into a lunar orbit the lander will detach itself and attempt to soft land on the moon surface so if everything goes as per plan then the soft landing on the moon will be carried out on august 23 at 5:47 pm so this is all about the news in this discussion we will understand some points about chandrayaan 3 mission before that the syllabus relevant to this discussion is highlighted here you can go through it now let's start with chandrayaan 3 See Chandrayaan 3 is a follow on mission to Chandrayaan 2 and it is India's third lunar mission. The mission would consist of an indigenous lander module, propulsion module and a rover. Note one important fact here, the mission primarily aims to soft land a lander module on the south pole of the moon. Now coming to the objectives. There are three main objectives of Chandrayaan 3 mission. Firstly the mission aims to demonstrate safe and soft landing on the lunar surface. Secondly the mission aims to demonstrate rover's rowing capabilities on the moon. And finally the mission aims to conduct inside to scientific experiments. The ISRO said that the Chandrayaan 3 mission is expected to be supportive to future interplanetary missions. This means that the Chandrayaan 3 mission will demonstrate new technologies required for interplanetary missions. Now talking about the payloads. As I said earlier, Chandrayaan 3 would consist of a lander module, propulsion module and a rover. Each of these modules will have their own payloads. Now we will see about the payloads of propulsion module. See the propulsion module's main task is to carry the lander and rover to the lunar orbit. It basically acts like a taxi that takes them close to the moon. Once it reaches a distance of 100 kilometers from the moon, the lander and the rover will separate from the propulsion module and start their journey towards the moon's surface. The propulsion module also carries a special payload called shape that is spectro polarimetry of habitable planet earth shape is like a scientific instrument that helps study the earth from the moon 
it analyzes the light coming from the moon and its polarization so which is like the orientation of the light waves by studying this polarization scientists can learn more about earth's magnetic fields composition and other important characteristics so the shape payload will help to understand the spectropolarimetric signatures of the earth this is about the payload of the propulsion module now talking about the payloads of lander module see the lander module is responsible for landing on the moon surface and deploying the rover it has four additional payloads that perform different tasks first is the chandra's surface thermophysical experiment this payload helps measure the temperature properties of the lunar surface especially in the polar region it tells us how hot or cold the surface gets and helps scientists understand the moon's climate second is the instrument for lunar seismic activity this payload measures the seismic activity like earthquakes around the landing site it helps scientists understand the structure of the moon's crust and mantle similar to how seismographs on earth help us study earthquakes and earth's interior thirdly we have rampa lp or ramba langomer probe this payload estimates the density of plasma ions and electrons that is charged particles near the lunar surface it helps scientists understand the behavior of these particles and how they react with the moon's environment fourthly we have the laser retro reflector array this payload is provided by nasa it is like a reflective surface on the moon it reflects the laser beams sent from earth back to the earth source scientists can measure the time it takes for the laser to travel and return helping them precisely determine the distance between the earth and the moon now coming to the payloads of the rover the rover is a small vehicle that moves on the moon surface it has a mission life of one lunar day which is equivalent to 14 earth days the rover carries two payloads first is the alpha particle x-ray spectrometer this payload helps determine the chemical composition of the lunar soil it can tell us what elements are present in the soil and it will help scientists understand the minerals on the moon surface it's like having a tool that can analyze the ingredients in the sample of the moon dirt then we have the laser induced breakdown spectroscope This payload helps determine the elemental composition of rocks and soil around the landing site. It shoots lasers at the surface and analyzes the light that is emitted. By studying the light, scientists can identify the elements present in the rocks and soil. It's like using a special flashlight to examine the rocks and understand their makeup. Apart from this, The rover will also carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface during the course of its mobility. So overall, these payloads and instruments play crucial role in gathering scientific data and expanding our knowledge about moon earth and their interactions. See, this is the mains practice question regarding the first part of this discussion. In the second part of this discussion we will try to understand why Chandrayaan 3 mission is focusing particularly to land on the south pole of the moon rather than other areas we'll also try to understand the difference between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 see as i earlier told the Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft would be the first to land at the lunar south pole this is an area of special interest for space agencies and private space companies this is because some sources are saying that there is an occurrence of water ice in permanently shadowed areas around the south pole of the moon see the lunar south pole has craters on its surface here the word crater refers to a very large hole in the ground which has been caused by something hitting it or by an explosion see The craters in the south pole of the moon are unique in their own way. This is because sunlight is not able to reach the interiors of such craters. NASA even claims that some craters in the moon's south pole have not received sunlight for billions of years. 
Also, the temperatures in the interior of the craters could dip as low as minus 203 degrees Celsius. Because of all these factors, it is said that the craters contain a fossil record of hydrogen, water, ice and other materials dating from the early solar system. Due to the prevailing cold temperatures, the matter trapped in the southern lunar region would not have witnessed much changes over the year. So, they could hold clues to early life. All these factors make the southern lunar pole fascinating for scientific investigations. And this is exactly why India is also focusing much on the moon's south pole. Now, we will move on to see about the differences between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3. See, the mission architecture of both Chandrayaan 2 and 3 remains the same. But there are certain differences between the two missions. The main difference lies with the payloads. See, Chandrayaan 2 mission comprised of Vikram lander, Pragyan rover and an orbiter. But Chandrayaan 3 comprised of a lander and a rover only. And there is no orbiter. The ISRO says that Chandrayaan 3 will use the orbiter already orbiting around the moon that was launched by Chandrayaan 2 mission. So basically, Chandrayaan-3 will use the orbiter of Chandrayaan-2 for its communications and terrain mapping requirements. The next difference lies with the onboard cameras. See, the Chandrayaan-3 lander is equipped with lander hazard detection and avoidance cameras. This will be very helpful in coordinating with the orbiter. In addition to this, the cameras will also assist in the mission control during the landing process on the surface of the moon. See, Chandrayaan-2 had just one such camera, but Chandrayaan-3 has been fitted with two such cameras. So, this will help in efficient mission control during the landing process. Apart from this, the lander of Chandrayaan-3 is also fitted with additional solar panels when compared with Chandrayaan-2. This will ensure power generation no matter how it lands. The next difference lies in the endurability of the lander. See, the lander of Chandrayaan-3 will have stronger legs than the previous version. So, it will help the lander to survive a slightly high landing speed. So, this is all that I wanted to discuss regarding this news article. With the learned points in mind, now we will move on to the next article discussion. See, this news article talks about an infection that originates from the mouth and teeth. It can escalate into a swelling in the face and neck and it will even turn fatal. It is nothing but Ludwig's angina. See, many people lack awareness about this fatal infection. They think it's just a swelling in the mouth and it can be treated at home itself. But when they get to know about the infection, it becomes too late. So a hospital in Chennai has called upon the public to be aware of Ludwig's angina. So in this discussion, we will see few facts about this infection. See, Ludwig's angina is a rare skin infection that occurs on the floor of the mouth underneath the tongue. It is a bacterial infection and it occurs after a tooth abscesses, which is nothing but the collection of pus in the center of a tooth. It can also occur after other mouth infections or injuries. The bacteria Streptococcus and Staphylococcus are the common causes of this infection. It is more common in adults than in children. Usually, people who get prompt treatment recover fully. So, poor dental hygiene, trauma or laceration, that is, a deep cut or tear in the skin of the mouth, a recent tooth extraction can also cause this bacterial infection. Now, talking about how dangerous this disease is, in Ludwig's angina, this, the infection spreads to the tissue spaces surrounding the muscles and bones in the face and neck referred to as the facial spaces. The inflammatory swelling can rapidly propagate and individuals with pre-existing health conditions like severe diabetes or those undergoing immunosuppressive therapy are more vulnerable. An infected wisdom tooth can cause swelling in the mouth neck and base of the tongue and may even extend to the vocal cords. This might trigger immediate inflammation and infection and endanger breathing and potentially results in death. Now talking about the symptoms, the symptoms of this disease include swelling of the tongue, neck pain and breathing problems. There may also be pain or tenderness in the floor of your mouth which is just underneath your tongue. 
difficulty in swallowing drooling problems with speech neck pain swelling of the neck redness of the neck weakness fatigue ear ache tongue swelling that causes your tongue to push against your palate are some of the symptoms of this infection now talking about the treatment see if the swelling is interfering with your breathing the first goal of treatment is to clear your airway doctors may insert a breathing tube through your nose or mouth and into your lungs in some cases they need to create an opening through your neck into your windpipe this procedure is called tracheotomy doctors perform it in emergency situations surgery is sometimes necessary to drain the excess fluids that are causing swelling in the oral cavity these are some important points that i wanted to discuss regarding this news article with the learned points in mind now we will move on to the next article discussion take a look at this editorial article it talks about the shanghai cooperation organization summit that was hosted by india the author criticizes the decision of the government to hold the summit in virtual manner also the government didn't provide any reason for holding the summit virtually in this context let's discuss about seo in brief and we'll also see some important points from the article first let's see its membership seo has eight members including china india kazakhstan kyrgyzstan pakistan russia uzbekistan and tajikistan see india and pakistan became permanent members only in 2017 also note that iran became the newest member of the shanghai cooperation organization and it joined at the virtual summit held by india on july 4th apart from these afghanistan belarus and mongolia are the observer states now what are its objectives see seo was created in shanghai in 2001 its objective was to enhance regional cooperation by curbing terrorism separatism and extremism in the central asian region seo has been an observer in the un general assembly since 2005 now let's see about the structure of seo the heads of state council is the supreme decision making body of the seo it meets once a year and adopts decisions in important matters note that this year's head of state council meeting was hosted by india india conducted the meeting virtually and this is what is discussed in this editorial other than this there are two permanent bodies in seo a secretariat in beijing and regional anti terrorist structure in tashkent note that the official working languages of seo are chinese and russian now let's discuss in the main point of view What is the importance of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization for India? See, India is trying to increase its trade and investment ties with the SEO countries. Being a member of SEO, India can engage with the energy-rich countries of Central Asia and cooperate with them in the energy sector. Then, SEO member countries have decided to designate one city from member countries as tourism and cultural capital every year under a rotating initiative so this will enhance the cultural cooperation between the members now varanasi has been designated as the first cultural capital of the seo under this initiative also seo has a strong focus on counter terrorism cooperation india which has been a victim of terrorism can benefit from the efforts of the organization to combat terrorism in the region so should india stay in seo despite the friction with pakistan and china see china and pakistan have deliberately tried to bring bilateral issues into seo this violates the well established principles of the seo charter such acts are counterproductive to the cooperation between india and member states as we saw india has enormous potential for enhancing ties in the areas of economy trade connectivity and energy security but it's a reality that india's gains from the seo is restricted due to the influence of china and pakistan within the organization so it can be said that india cannot fully neglect seo now we will see some important points from this article see the article points out india's stance on connectivity projects particularly china's belt and road initiative and china pakistan economic corridor so such a stance has isolated india within the seo 
because india insists that connectivity projects should respect national sovereignty and it views the bri and cpec as violating india's sovereignty then the author also cautions about china's integration of eurasia through the belt and road initiative because this poses a threat to india this integration is supported by pakistan and it could potentially exclude india from the region so india should not support the bri but it should instead seek ways to maintain strong connections with eurasia it is important for india to prevent other seo members from becoming closer to china so in simpler terms the article discusses india's virtual participation in seo and how it reflects a shift in india's approach to the seo so these are some important points that i wanted to discuss regarding this news article with the learned points in mind now we will move on to the next article discussion see as we all know our prime minister is currently in france on an official state visit this news article covers various announcements made by the governments as part of this bilateral meeting so in our discussion today we will try to look into the important announcements made during this meet see most of the announcements that were made are in the areas of defense cooperation this strong defense cooperation shows the mutual trust that exists between india and france Yesterday there was a news about India planning to purchase Rafale M fighter and Scorpion submarines from France right In addition to this the countries announced the Horizon 2047 roadmap See India and France are long standing strategic partners in the Indo Pacific See the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries started in 1947 and there was an upgrade of partnership to the strategic level in 1998 so both the countries have consistently acted together since then this resulted in building of a high level of mutual trust shared commitment to the principles enshrined in the united nations charter and common values rooted in international law so to mark the 25th anniversary of the indo french partnership both countries agreed to adopt a road map to set the course for the bilateral relationship up to 2047 as a part of this horizon 2047 india and france agreed that they would cooperate in the joint development of a compact aircraft engine and also on development of an engine that would be used in indian multi role compact helicopter the french mnc safran will aid india in the engine development The other notable defense deals were for the transfer of technology of forging and casting for the Shakti engine and MOU for collaboration of surface ships. Here Shakti engine is a engine that was co-developed by Turbomeca and Hindustan Aeronautical Limited. Currently this engine is used in Dhruv helicopters that are operated by India. Finally both countries are working towards adopting a road map on defense industrial cooperation these are some of the defense cooperation that is made part of this horizon 2047 now coming to space cooperation india and france have decided to deepen their cooperation in all areas of the space sector by strengthening their programs of common interest here firstly to enhance the earth observation capabilities india's isro and france cnes are in the trishna satellite system secondly india's new space india limited and france ariane space has plans to collaborate in commercial launch services this is about the cooperation around space technology the next is counter terrorism India and France have always stood together with each other in the fight against terrorism. Moving forward, the countries will cooperate under the lines of No Money for Terror, that is NMFT initiative and the Christchurch call to action to eliminate terrorist and violent extremism content online. In addition to this, both countries formalized cooperation between the National Security Guard of India and the Group D Intervention de la Gendarmerie Nationale of France. This is about the counter terrorism initiative that is part of Horizon 2047. Next is the cooperation between the countries on countering climate change. 
So, in the arena of climate change, India and France are cooperating closely on transition towards a low-carbon economy. Through this, they aim to achieve three things. One is to address India's growing energy need. Then, to ensure energy security for all while adhering to the Paris climate commitment. India and France particularly gave more focus on nuclear cooperation. So both countries also agreed to work on establishing a partnership on low and medium power modular reactors or small modular reactors and advanced modular reactors. Next, India and France have plans for developing close cooperation in innovation in decarbonated hydrogen production capacities. On hydropower, India and France have plans for strengthening their cooperation particularly in the renovation of existing installations, the promotion of runoff river solutions and pumped storage solutions. And in solar energy, both countries are already part of the International Solar Alliance. So these are some of the initiatives mentioned in Horizon 2047 regarding countering climate change. Then, in the area of strategic cooperation, both countries announced the Roadmap India-France cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. In 2018, India and France agreed on a joint strategic vision of India-France cooperation in the Indian Ocean region. And currently, they are expanding their cooperation to the Indo-Pacific. So, through this roadmap, both the countries are planning on achieving some goals. Firstly, to protect their economic and security interests. Secondly, to ensure equal and free access to global commons. Thirdly, to build partnership of prosperity and sustainability in the region. Fourthly, to ensure that the nations adhere to international law. Then, to protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the nations in the region. And finally, to ensure that a stable order prevails in the region. So this is about the roadmap India-France cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. This is all regarding this discussion. Today we saw about the important announcements made during Prime Minister's visit to France. With the learned points in mind, now we will move on to the next article discussion. See, this article from Sports Page says that Rutraj Gaikwad will lead India men's cricket team in the 19th Asian Games. See, the Asian Games 2022 is the 19th edition and it should have been held in China last year. But due to rising COVID-19 cases in the country, it got postponed. This year, it will be held in Hangzhou, China from September 23 to October 8. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through Asian Games. See, the Asian Games is a multidisciplinary sports event held once in every four years. Athletes from all Asian countries are welcomed to participate in this event. The Asian Games is recognized by the International Olympic Committee and is the second largest multi-sport event after the Olympics. Now, let's quickly go through its history. See, before the Asian Games, the Far Eastern Championship Games were held. After the Second World War, many Asian countries gained independence. So, Guru Dat Sonti, a member of the Indian International Olympic Committee, proposed the idea of Asian Games so that all Asian nations can be represented. The first ever Asian Games were held in New Delhi in 1951. Asian Games were regulated by the Asian Games Federation from 1951 to 1978. Since 1982, Olympic Council of India regulates the Asian Games. Know that Olympic Council of Asia is an independent, non-governmental, not-for-profit international Asian sport organization. The main objective of the OCA is to develop sport, culture and education of Asian youth as well as to promote international respect, friendship, goodwill and peace through sports. Coming back, the symbol for Asian Games is rising sun with interlocking rings. Nine nations have hosted the Asian Games so far and 46 nations have participated in the Games. Israel has not taken part in the Asian Games since 1974. 44 sports have been included in the Asian Games history. 
Remember, India is a founder member of Asian Games and also the host of the first Asian Games. 1982 Asian Games were also held in New Delhi. Also, India is one of the seven countries to have participated in all the editions of the Asian Games. Note, this is important. India has won at least one gold medal at every Asian Games. India has always ranked in the top 10 in the medals tally in Asian Games, except in the year 1990. Now, these are the top 10 countries that hold medals since the beginning of Asian Games. You can go through it. These are some important points that I wanted to discuss regarding this news article. With the learned points in mind, now we will move on to the next article discussion. Look at this article. Yesterday, as part of the MISHTI program, Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change planted mangrove saplings at Kovalam. So, in this news article discussion, let us quickly go through the importance of mangroves and we will also see about the MISHTI program. See, mangroves are salt tolerant plant communities. They mainly occur in tropical and subtropical regions of the world, that is, between latitudes 24 degree north and 38 degree south. Within the tropical and subtropical region, they mainly occur in the intertidal zones. Here, the intertidal zone is the area where the ocean meets the land between high and low tides. These intertidal zones are marshy in condition. The conditions in the intertidal zone include lack of oxygen, high salinity and diurnal tidal inundation. These conditions are not ideal for normal plants to grow. But the mangroves thrive in these conditions which is its speciality. They also support a rich food web with mollusks and algae filled substrate acting as a breeding ground for small fish, mud crabs and shrimps. So they provide a livelihood to local artisanal fishers. They act as effective carbon stores holding up to four times the amount of carbon as other forested ecosystems. So these are some of the significance of mangroves. Now let us look at the MISHTI program. The Mangrove Initiative for Shoreline Habitats and Tangible Income Scheme that is MISHTI scheme. This is a government led initiative aimed at increasing the mangrove cover along the coastline and on salt band lands. The scheme is primarily focused on the Sundarbans Delta, Hooghly Estuary in West Bengal and other bay parts of the country. But know that it also includes other wetlands in the country. The objective of the scheme is to conserve and restore the mangrove ecosystem which is critical to mitigating the effects of climate change, preventing coastal erosion and sustaining local livelihoods. Under the MISHTI scheme, the government is providing financial assistance to local communities to undertake mangrove plantation activities. The scheme also involves awareness campaigns to educate people about the importance of mangroves and their role in protecting the environment. The plantation activities are carried out in a participatory manner involving local communities and NGOs. This would ensure sustainability and community ownership of the initiative. Overall, the MISHTI scheme is a significant step towards promoting sustainable development and protecting the vulnerable areas of India. The scheme is implemented under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and 80% of the project cost is borne by the Government of India. The remaining 20% is contributed by the respective state governments. So these are some of the points that I wanted to discuss regarding this news article. With the learned points in mind, now we will move on to the next part of our discussion which is practice questions. Question number 1. Consider the following countries. Spain, Portugal, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Austria. How many of the above mentioned countries share land border with France? See, in the north, France shares border with Belgium, while Monaco, Spain and Andorra share border with France in the south. Luxembourg, Germany, Switzerland and Italy border France in the east. So the answer for this question is option A, only 4. Question number 2. Consider the following statements with reference to mangrove sites. 
statement number one mangrove plants require approximate mix of saline water and fresh water statement number two mangrove plants require mud flats to enable it to grow and develop statement number three mangrove plants are found in the intertidal zones of sheltered coasts statement number four Mangrove vegetations have been reported in all the coastal states including Andaman and Nicobar Islands. See here, statement 1 is alone incorrect. It is a shrub or small tree that grows in coastal saline or brackish water. As in option 1, it is given as fresh water, hence it is incorrect. Except that all the statements are correct. It occurs worldwide in the tropics and subtropics, mainly between latitudes 25 degree north and 25 degree south mangroves are salt tolerant trees also called halophytes and are adapted to life in harsh coastal conditions they contain a complex salt filtration system and complex root system to cope with salt immersion and wave action mangroves are a group of trees and shrubs that live in coastal intertidal zones of sheltered coasts in India, mangroves grow in West Bengal, Gujarat, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Goa, Kerala and Karnataka. Question number 3. Consider the following diseases. Tuberculosis, Pneumonia, Typhoid, Ludwig's Angina, Ebola. How many diseases given above SR are caused by bacteria? See, the correct answer is option C, only 4. Ebola is the odd one. Ebola disease is caused by Ebola viruses. We know that Ludwig's angina is caused by bacteria. TB is also caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Typhoid is caused by Salmonella typhi. Pneumonia is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae. All these are bacteria. Question number 4. Who of the following became the first Indian to win a gold medal in women's heptathlon at Asian Games? See, the correct answer here is option A, Swapna Barman. See, heptathlon is an athletic competition for women in which each athlete competes in seven different events. They tally the score at the end and announce a winner. India is participating in Asian Games since 1951. And just in the last edition which was held in 2018, Swapna Barman won gold medal in heptathlon. And she became the first Indian woman to win gold medal in heptathlon. Also know that the first Indian woman to win a gold medal at the Asian Games is Kamaljit Sandhu. She ran 400 meter race in 57.3 seconds and won gold at 1970 Bangkok Asian Games. Now this is a quiz question for you. Interested aspirants can comment the answer in the comment box. And displayed here are the main questions for your practice. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment box below. If you found our video to be useful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Happy learning!